Uh, good morning, everyone. So I will pre present this collaborative project, JAMSTAT, which is a collaboration with Xavier Penek, Alice Lebrigand, and many other people. And our goal is to build a Python, pa Python package for Riemannian geometry in machine learning. So the goal of the presentation is to present the library, but also compare it with other existing libraries that do similar things. Uh, and also maybe advertise for the fact that us as a community should share our code following guidelines, like we should agree on a set of standards so that it's easier for us to reuse the code of other people. If we implement thing, things in the same way, with the same logic, it's easy for me to take the algorithm of someone else. So this is the outline of the talk. I will motivate why we decided to implement Jumpstat in the first place then give an overview on how we built it, what are the manifolds that are implemented, the operations of manifolds that are implemented, and show you some code snippets if you want to use it. Then I will compare it with other libraries, optimization libraries on Riemannian manifolds, and also another one that implements uh, differential geometry. And we'll end with two examples, so one from Alice, who used uh, Jamsat in her work, and one from myself. And lastly, we'll end on telling you how you can contribute. I mean, you can use the library, but you can also contribute to it, and I encourage you to do so. So first, motivation. So this is meant for our community. This is meant for our community, for the geometric science of information community, in which you know we code. Uh, so there are different situations in, you, in which you code. You can implement simulations to get intuition on your theory. You can implement simulation to test your theorem. You can implement an algorithm, that's the goal of your paper, is to present a new algorithm in uh, geometric science and information, or you want to illustrate the use of the algorithms. So for example, this is the algorithm for the pressure mean and principal geodesic uh, analysis. And the idea is that in all this situation in which you need to implement, very often you use standard geometric operations. Or if you want to do simulations and tie examples, we tend to use uh, manifolds, uh, we tend to use the same manifolds. For example, SED, uh, the manifold of symmetric positive definite matrices, hyperbolic spaces, some knee groups, etc. And so if you all use the same thing, why not put that in common? Because otherwise you arrive as a PhD student and you need to learn that field, etc. And then when you need to uh, test your algorithm or your theorem, you need to re-implement all of hyperbolic space or uh, hypersphere or whatever, so can we share all of this? So that was the goal for GMSAT, a Python package that factorizes code for community geometric science of information into a shared unit test library with several backends. Well, by backends, I mean it works in NumPy, TensorFlow, and PyTorch, because the goal later is to put everything on GPU to have uh, optimized computations. So you can just, if you want to use it first, p3 install GMSAT, and you define your backend, so how you want to run uh, GM so it's interesting for you if you always wanted to use Python and PyTorch, but you still have code in C and MATLAB and you don't want to re-implement re all your manifolds. Uh, maybe you want to quickly test your theorem and algorithm, but you don't want to re-implement the geometry on NPD uh, matrices. You so call on GitHub, but it doesn't follow a standard that you're familiar with, so it takes time for you. Uh, so it's maybe interesting for you, but also interesting for the community to collectively save us time or to democratize geometric science of information in general. So for that, we take example of the, of the machine learning community, which has experienced a buzz. There are obviously more people, more funding in this community, but still, they have coding principles that are very interesting. For example, if you look at the scikit learn package that gathers a lot of machine learning algorithms, that's super useful for the community, because people do not implement all of the versions of PCAs whenever they need it. They go to this package, they do pca.fit, and that's all, all what you need to do. And if they want to use a clustering algorithm now, they do cluster.fit, and it's the same syntax, so not only everything is available, but it's written with the same coding principle. And that enables the fast, uh, fast advances uh, in this field. So the question is, can we do the scikit learn or a smaller version of it, uh, for ge the operations in geometric science of information? If we agree on principles, then it will be easier for us to go from an algorithm uh, to another and reuse each other's code. Okay, so now let me give you an overview on the library that we implemented, <laughs> called GMSAT for geometric statistics. So 
The main thing is that it uses object-oriented uh, programming, OOP, which is a programming language model in which programs are organized around objects rather than functions and logic. So what is an object? An object can be defined as a data field that has unique attributes and behavior. So for example, I am an object of the class human. So what is the class of an object? It's basically a template that explains the recipe to build objects from. So if I'm an object of the class human, I will need to have some properties or attributes, like for example, an email and an address. And I can also do things which are implemented in methods for example, uh, send email. So an object is that thing that has attributes or properties and methods and things that it can do. So this is if you wanted to implement uh, an, an object that is of the class human, but it's actually very useful to implement differential geometry and machine learning uh, in general. So for Riemannian geometry, it's very naturally implemented with object-oriented programming and we did that in JOMSAT with four main base classes. So for example, manifold is a class. Uh, the D group SON uh, is also a class. The D group SO3 will be an instantiation, the, will be an object instantiated from the class SON. So these are the main class, manifold and unmetted manifolds. And we also use a class structure with uh, the metric structure, so for example, Riemannian matrix and invariant matrix. And what's very nicely with the object-oriented programming, it is inheritance property. So for example, if I go back to the class human, you could say that the class mathematicians is a special case of the class human. And this means that the class mathematician inherits from the class human. And that's very nicely implementing object-oriented programming because now if you instantiate part of me, I'm an object of the class mathematician, I will inherit all the methods from the class mathematicians, but also all of the methods of the class human. And so, for example, here we have embedded a manifold that is embedded in the embedded space, inherits from the class manifold. Invariant metrics, these are left and right invariant metrics, remaining invariant metrics are Lie groups, they inherits from the class remaining metrics. So here, if you have geodesics implemented, then that class will also have directly geodesics. So that's for Riemannian geometry. It's very nicely implemented with object-oriented programming. But actually, machine learning as well is very nicely implemented with object-oriented programming. And that's what's done with psychic learns. So they have also base classes. For example, a base estimator, but also classifier, regressor, tensor, transform, and custom mixing. Which means that every algorithm that you submit to psychic learn, if you want to implement a new clustering algorithm, you need to make it such that it inherits from that class, and as a result, it will have the same methods and so the same syntax that all of the other clustering algorithms. And so this factorization is very useful for people to uh, actually uh, implement the same. So let's look at how we did it in GeoSat for the Riemannian geometry, and first the manifold <coughs> class. So, we have different classes that inherit from the class manifolds. Embedded manifold inherits from the class manifolds. But then all of these hyperspheres, Lie groups, hyperbolic spaces, SPD matrices, spaces of curvature, inherits from the class manifold. So this is an example of the code. The class hypersphere inherits from the class from the class embedded manifold, which itself inherits from the class manifold. And that's how it looks like you want to start defining the hypersphere. The hypersphere is a class. It's a recipe to instantiate objects. Objects have attributes and methods. So what are the attributes of the hypersphere? If I instantiate an object of the class hypersphere, attributes will be its dimension. And also, I want to put the embedding manifold, because I said it's an embedded manifold, so its attributes can be which manifold is embedded in it. So then I also have an embedding metric and the metric. And what is the metric? This is the an object that is an instantiation of the class hypersphere metric. So this is only how you start the creation of the hypersphere, but then following here in the code, you have all, the, all of the methods that the hypersphere can implement. For example, taking a vector on the Euclidean space and projecting it on the hypersphere. 
So this is an overall diagram on how the inheritance looks like in the Jamstack package. So here you have the class manifold. All these errors here, they describe inheritance. So embedded manifold inherits from the class manifold. And here we have the hypersphere that inherits from the class embedded manifold. Hyperbolic space inherits from the class embedded manifold because it's embedded in the Minkowski space. Because we have a lot of manifolds that are defined as classes inheriting from embedded manifolds, we also put in dots here in dashes which manifold they are embedded into. So it's not the same logic relation, right? Inheritance, it's really, this is a subcase, a special case of that one, but it doesn't mean that that one is the embedding of that one, right? So I can inherit from a manifold, it doesn't mean that I'm embedded there. So it's a different logical relation. Inheritance is these arrows, and for example, the hydrosphere inherits from embedded manifold, but it's embedded in the UV. So that's for the manifold class. We also have the Riemannian metric class. So Riemannian metric class, here is an example of the class hypersphere metric that inherits from the class Riemannian uh, metric. As a metric, it has some attributes, for example, the dimension, signature, and because it was embedded, it has an embedded embedding metric. And then as a class inheriting from Riemannian metric, it implements some methods. So not only it has properties, but it also has methods. What is a method defining an, from an object from the class Riemannian metric? Is this one. <coughs> I know products of two tangent vectors at the base point, geodesic distance between two points, exponential and logarithm maps at the base point, Riemannian ones. So if I have a metric, I can do metric dot exponential. The exponential is a method of my metric. And that's how it's implemented this object oriented programming. So, with each manifold class, we have defined some classes that inherit from Riemannian metric, Euclidean metric, hyperspher metric, hyperbolic metric, some metric on discrete task curves, etc. We also have a visualiz visualization module for lower dimensional manifolds. So, for example, here, uh, on the hyperbolic plane, we have the Klein disk, the Poincaré disk, and the Poincaré over half plane. So not only you have it implemented in the package, you can also check it visual. And then, so we have the geometry part, but we also have the machine learning part that we want to implement using object-oriented programming. And for that, we inherit from SK learn base class. So in machine learning, everybody is used to SK learn. You do bcl.fit. What about we have tangent PCA and we can do tangent PCA dot fit? Or we have a Riemannian quantization algorithm and we want to do quantization dot fit. If we do that and we go from the machine learning community, for them it will be seamless to use our geometric algorithm just using the same API as everybody knows in SK Learn. So this is a script that uses both the geometric side of GEMSTAT and the machine learning side that does tangent PCA on the hypersphere. So first, you instantiate a sphere, which is an object from the class hypersphere of dimension two. Then, well, this is simulated data. Data, sphere, random from Mrs. Fisher. Uh, you simulate some data on the sphere. You compute the mean, and you say, oh, I'm going to give this object, tangent PCA, which is an instantiation of the class tangent PCA. I want to use this metric, and this is how many components I want. And this is the exact same syntax as what is done in the SKLearn. Then you fit your machine learning algorithm on your data. You need to say, so it's standard PCA, you need to say at which base point you want to do it. Usually we do it at the mean. But this computing here is a refreshing mean uh, algorithm. And then so you can fit, and then you have all the properties for the attributes in the TPCA, tangent PCA objects that you had in scikit-learn in the first place. In scikit-learn, once you have fit your algorithm, then you have all the PCA components that are stores are attributes of the object of the class tangent PCA. And for example, you can, if you have the principal components, then you can use GeoSite to make a geodesic out of it. So it's a sphere. You take the metric attributes of the sphere. This is a geodesic method that corresponds to that metric. You say which initial point you want to do it at. 
knew the principal components and using our visualization to view the two principal components here. But the idea is that the code is really minimal and abstracts a lot of the details in the computation of differential geometry. So if you want to take your first look at it, we have some documentation on this website. And so you see the definition of all classes. For example, this is the space of this code curve. You see which parameters you need to give it to instantiate an object of this class. So if you want a discretized curve on the hypersphere, you say, I'm going to instantiate an object of the class. That's, oh, sorry, this is the L2 metric on the space. Uh, you need to say in which embedding manifold uh, you are. And then all, here are the methods. They come with a small explanation of what it is. OK, so now I'm going to compare Jansas with other libraries, because people have implemented these things in other packages. So what are the differences between these libraries? So first, family of other libraries that compute with differential geometry are optimization on Riemannian manifold libraries. So I could just three of them. If I forget any, please do not. Uh, PyManot, GeoOpt, and MacTorch. So their emphasis is really on Riemannian records. Uh, and for that, they compute only the operation of differential geometry that are needed to compute gradients and actions on, on Riemannian manifold. But not necessarily geodesic, not parallel transport, none of these things, really optimized way of computing these gradients. So in PyMyNot, it's a general uh, library for optimization on manifold. It can be used for cost functions that are loss functions, empirical risks, but not only it's any optimizations. Uh, and you have these solvers, and it's a very optimization-oriented API. With GeoOp and MatchUp, these are meant for machine learning, because it's here you see stochastic optimization, so the cost function now is a loss function. It's not very empirical basic. It's an average over the data points. And so they use stochastic gradient descent, and they have implemented some solvers, some solvers. And then you have MacTorch, MacTorch which is more uh, focus not only on, on machine learning but deep learning and actually it has modified the code of Torch by putting this manifold uh, parameter here. So this is really tailored to optimization on manifolds. So this is ours. It's more similar to Theano geometry library which is more focused on the differential geometry side of things in the sense that we want to implement all of these operations that we need with an emphasis for them on computational anatomy. So they have some manifolds. The most interesting one, I think, is the landmarks and DGM manifold that's implemented in it. What's really nice about this uh, library is that they use automatic differentiation to have the differential geometry tensor, for example, the Riemannian curvature tensor, Ricci curvature, scalar curvature. They also have a stochastic spot. And the API is not optimization oriented. It's really for us differential geometry oriented. Uh, in contrast, we have generalized finite dimensional manifolds, a bit more than them, but uh, finite dimensional ones. And most, almost all the time with closed form for geodesic, exponential math, and logarithm. We do have a little bit of parameter optimization on manifold with chaos. And our geometry, geometry API is really differential geometry oriented and machine learning is like SK uh, So just to give you a comparison in terms of what is implemented in this uh, manifolds, PyManab has a decent number of manifolds implemented. These ones have a little bit less. We also have some manifolds uh, implemented. There, yeah, we share some implementations. In terms of geometric operations, here exponential logarithm reflections, and then going from the Euclidean gradient to the Riemannian gradient, these two do opt optimizations, so they have the same operations implemented. For these two libraries, we have uh, more operations because our focus is on differential geometry. So this is uh, the comparison. In terms of backends, PyManup has Piano and TensorFlow. These two use PyTorch and are very linked to the PyTorch implementation, so I don't know if they will want to use other backends. We use TensorFlow and PyTorch. 
In terms of continuous integration and code coverage, so that's really interesting for you as a user. This means that these people have tested their code and have implemented a set of engineering infrastructure to be sure that everybody that contributes to the package will have their code tested. So this means that Pymenum has 47% of their code tested. Here I didn't find it. GeoF has 84% of their code tested. Here there is no safety uh, for you, so you can use the code, but you, you don't know. And for us, we have pretty good coverage in NumPy, and we are improving in the TensorFlow and PyTorch. So we have two examples. I'm going to rush through it, uh, just to say that Alice and I used this package in our own research. So I use it for, for a clustering algorithm on SPD matrices. I use it for a regression algorithm on the groups. I'm also using it with variation local encoders right now. So I'm just going to go through that for you. <coughs> So this was the classification of the SPD space. For us, it's a regression on B groups using invariant methods. So let me conclude on how you can contribute to the package. The project is on GitHub. There are many ways to contribute. You can contribute code, documentation, uh, and through to inquiries on the issue trackers, investigating bugs, reviewing other developers for regress, report issues you are facing. And there are some requirements on how you can contribute. In particular, we ask that you provide code with tests. In practice, you run tests in your command line. You, you cannot test your algorithm anyway. So we just ask you that you provide your test code with us. We have a page that describes on how you can uh, contribute. So thank you very much. And above all, don't hesitate to reach out. If you have code you want to contribute, we'll be happy to help you with GitHub and all of these things. And hopefully, we can gather all of this and do faster in our research. because everybody's running late, I just had the information. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the talk of this afternoon will be uh, uh, delayed in 15 minutes. So, if you have any questions, go ahead. Yes. Um, do you have full feature parity between your backends? Sorry? Uh, do you have the same features for all the backends? Yes, so actually the way we implemented the backend is factorized in the sense that we define at the beginning of each file you need to import in the in the file of the code source, you import geomstats.backend as gs, and then everything is coded as gs dot array, uh, gs dot I don't know what you want to do, uh, this tag or whatever, using the numpy API. And so, if in your command line you define the environment variable geomstat backend as numpy, TensorFlow, and PyTorch. Now this means you define it as numpy, not this for meaning numpy, it's for everything. If you define it as PyTorch, it's only PyTorch, and we do the conversions ourselves with the names. If the names do not match, for example, TensorFlow API is a bit different from numpy API, so we do all of the matching of the names, but we follow numpy APIs. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? So let's thank all the speakers again.